This is the Vive Tracker 3.0. You can use it with the Steam VR system, specifically the Lighthouse Base Stations version 2, to track either parts of your body or things such as a table tennis paddle or other peripheral within your virtual space. This version is 33% smaller, 15% lighter, with a 75% increase in battery time over its predecessor. Very impressive little bit of kit, and today we're going to be stepping through the process of getting these set up for full body tracking within VR. So modern VR headsets are, in my opinion, substantially more immersive than flat screen gaming. It offers six degrees of freedom, the controllers give you hand presence, and some VR headsets even include the ability to track your actual hands themselves. But what about the rest of your body? Well, you can use three of these Vive trackers to track your entire body by attaching one to your waist and one to each of your feet. Now, you do need lighthouse sensors, base stations in order for this to work, and it's not a particularly cheap thing to do. Each one of these trackers is $129, so that's $387 in total to get these working. You will also need a way of attaching these to your body. I've opted for the reality buff track belt which is a, another $50 on top of the pucks themselves and this uses threaded screws attached to padded straps so that you can attach them to your feet and you have a waistband also that allows you to strap one around your waist. There's lots of use cases for full body tracking including gaming, things like Blades and sorcery make use of full body tracking. That enables you to kick your opponents down to the ground. There's social media platforms such as VR chat that enable full body tracking that allows you to go to nightclubs and dance. But games such as Beat Saber also allow you to create mixed reality content where you can project virtual avatars of yourself into the game and it will move the, your legs and your waist in synchronization with your own body and allows you to create third person perspective uh, videos of you playing the game. There is also a use case around Machinima. Machinima, if you're not familiar with it, is, is producing film-like content but within digital worlds and increasingly you're going to find people using these for creating animations, very realistic animations within uh, video games using development software such as Unreal Engine or Unity and it's realistic because of course it's tracked the actual movements of people and that's always going to look and feel more realistic than something that's been animated by an animator. These are very much like setting up a controller, and if you're familiar with the Steam VR system, it isn't an overly laborious process at all. Of course, the first thing that you will need to do is charge your trackers. They don't take overly long to charge at all, and more than likely you'll find they've got some charge when they arrive to you, but I do recommend a good charge for first use. You're also going to need really good coverage from your lighthouses. I've seen that there are people who've struggled with just two. I've personally got three. Two should be enough, but this is as much about the positioning of your lighthouses as it is about how many of them that you've got. Now, each of these trackers includes a dongle in the box. It's also got a nice cradle that you can sit them in in order to position them nicely and you will need one of these per tracker that you are using in your setup. Your VR headset allows your controllers to connect to it but it only has two slots to do that and both of those slots of course are taken up by the controller and you need to position these dongles as reasonably far apart from each other as you can, otherwise you risk uh, interference between them. I positioned mine in three of the corners of my play space and I, I didn't have any trouble at all. So with your dongles connected, it's time to connect your fully charged trackers to them. You need to go into the Steam VR menu, the three lines in the top left hand corner, and then you need to go to devices and pair controller. 
you need to select the Vive Tracker, and then you need to power on the tracker, do this one at a time with one short push on the button, which is the Vive symbol in the center of the tracker. Once you've done this, you need to press and hold that button until you see a blue blinking light. This is now in pairing mode, and after a couple of seconds, you should see that light turn blue. Now it's worth taking a note within Steam VR of the name of each of the trackers and keeping a track of which tracker is which tracker. There was a lot of tracks and trackers in that sentence, but you will need this later when you want to allocate that to each of your body parts. You then need to repeat each of these steps for each of the other trackers, connecting them one by one until you have three Vive trackers, all of which should have green solid lights on them. Then go back into Steam VR, go into settings, controllers, and manage Vive trackers. Now this is where you will need a note of which tracker is which because there are some drop down menus here that allow you to allocate each of the trackers to a body part. You need to allocate one to your waist, one to your left foot and one to your right foot. This means that when you go into a full body tracking enabled application or game, it's gonna have some sense of which tracker is representing which body part. It's now time to launch into VR Chat or Blades and Sorcery. And the first thing that you will need to do is calibrate these trackers to your body. They're done in similar ways within each game, but they are slightly different and have slightly different steps. VR Chat, as an example, has your avatar in a T pose. It has the trackers represented by white blobs. And you need to try and get your controllers and your trackers as well lined up to the T-posed avatar as they are on your body within the real physical world. Now, you may need to play around with the height of your avatar within VR Chat as an example. Um, if you're getting really stuck making this work, there are some uh, ad advanced settings within the Steam VR advanced settings that you need to install separately from Steam that allow you to correct the floor position or if you're having real problems in extreme cases to actually pull the world up and down and reallocate and rescale the world, I found personally that I didn't need to do this. You then need to get the white blobs lined up on the T-Post avatar with where the trackers are in your body. So in this example, I had a tracker on the top of each of my feet, so I need to get the white blobs lined up with the top of each of my feet on the avatar within VR chat. Now this did take a few goes admittedly, but we're not talking anything more than a couple of minutes here. In Blades and Sorcery, I found that you calibrated your height first, and then when you look down, there are clear markings as to where you need to line up your trackers in order to be able to animate the body part uh, for the avatar within that game. Now. This was lots of fun. This is really where the fun started. And whether it's going to the Void Club within VR chat and having a boogie on the dance floor, you haven't quite interacted with that social media platform in that way until you've done that. Or whether it's kicking your opponents to the floor within Blades and Sorcery and then stomping on their heads. I was re-immersed within VR in a way that I haven't been in a really, really long time. Now this, this was lots and lots and lots of fun, without a doubt. It really did feel like I had lost something significant when I went into games that didn't support full body tracking and that the loss of my body and my legs just felt far more significant than perhaps I'd actually anticipated or realized. And all that did was just drive me back to those games uh, that did support it. Now, I mentioned Machinima at the beginning of this video, and whilst this absolutely is a uh, uh, an overview, a review, if you like, of the Vive uh, 3.0 trackers, and we'll come on to my thoughts on that in a, in a moment, but the real reason that I bought these is there is a another one of my side hustle projects that is a development project, a, a game actually that I'm developing with a number of other people, and 
we intend to use machinima components within that game to animate some of the characters. You're going to be seeing more of that coming up on the channel. It's in the very early stages, so that's not going to be in the next couple of days or couple of weeks, but do keep your eyes peeled for that. On to these trackers themselves, and I have to say, albeit a little bit pricey, they're very, very well made. The build quality is exceptional. They're extraordinarily light and very easy to use, and I'm very impressed with the battery time on them. You know, you're going to get a good four plus hours out of these. But the thing that I'm genuinely most impressed about, and I, I don't mean to sound quite as surprised as perhaps I'm about to, but the tracking quality on these is exceptional. You know, if you look when you're not in a game and you're just in the Steam VR uh, lobby area and you can look down and you can see your trackers and you move your feet around. I mean, I know that the Steam VR system, the tracking system is the best. We're talking sub millimeter tracking accuracy, but for some reason I was just genuinely surprised at just how good it was. Now, the game's interpolation of where your body is is truthfully a little mixed. I found VR chat was a little bit better than Blades and Sorcery, but from a actual tracking and telemetry perspective within Steam VR, it's very, very accurate indeed. And these small, discreet looking pucks don't make you look like a complete weirdo when you're doing uh, full body tracking uh, within VR. So I'm very impressed with these. The price is, I think, steep. You know, $387 for three of these is as much as an entire VR system frankly, but, you know, we're right on the edge cases, very advanced use cases here for VR, and increasingly it feels like we're moving towards that Ready Player One uh, vision and experience. So plug me in, take me into the matrix, I'm all in. So there we go, guys, the Vive Tracker 3.0. As always, I hope you're really well wherever in the world you are. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in my next one.